a special tag video for you today. This is the Thanksgiving book tag. I was tagged by Madison Goodyear, and this is her original tag. So I'm excited to do this. This is very seasonal, very topical, and has to do with my favorite holiday, Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving is all about food, fun, friends, family, and football. And I'm excited to kind of talk about books in relation to this tag. So this is a really clever tag and I'm looking forward to doing it. So she has 12 different categories, which are Thanksgiving and book related. And I'll give you my choices for each of these 12. Starting with number one, number one is mashed potatoes, which is the crowd pleaser. Everybody loves mashed potatoes. So what I think on this one is thinking about a book that has just universal praise, something that everybody loves. And you can kind of see it up here. The book I've chosen is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett an epic work of historical fiction, a work that it's a thousand pages long and I was 150 pages from the end and I was sad because I was running out of book. It's one of the best books I've read, probably a top three book of all time for me. And most of the time, like 99% of the time when I talk to other people about Pillars of the Earth, they all say, oh, I love that book. So that is my mashed potatoes crowd pleaser for this Thanksgiving book tag. Second prompt is Turkey, a must-read classic. This is really tough because I have a lot of classics that I love that I think are must-reads. Tale of Two Cities, Count of Monte Cristo, Jane Eyre, but the one I'm going to pick is one that I read this year, and that's To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Wow, is this a powerful book for something that's so short. It really blew me away. It is a book that I did read in high school, and I liked it. It was one of the few books that I was forced to read in high school that I actually liked. I loved it this time around. It has deep themes, it has great characters, it has a story that just keeps you going, and there's a reason why it is still required reading, and I think is a requirement for this list, just like turkey is a requirement for Thanksgiving. All right, number three, gravy, something you can't get enough of. Well, for me, that's right over here, The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. Can't get enough, get enough of that series. 16 books were not enough. I can't wait to reread it all. One of the best book series I have read in my lifetime. One of the best authors I've read in my lifetime. Just like Gravy, can't get enough of it. All right, number four, Cranberries, a palate cleanser. Well, I don't like cranberries, but I didn't want to pick a book I don't like. So I'm going with the palate cleanser. And the palate cleanser I'm choosing is a short story collection by Raymond Carver called Where I'm Calling From. Raymond Carver is the best or one of the best writers of short stories. And I think short story collections are the best palate cleansers that you can get because they're all often going to be very diverse in the way that they present themselves. And it's just a great way to break up any type of reading that you're doing. So palate cleanser, I thought short stories and no one is quite as good at it as Raymond Carver. Okay, number five, green bean casserole. Looks gross, tastes great. So I think by this one she's talking about, maybe it has a bad cover or something like that. So I picked a cover that I hate of a book that I love. And that is the original hardcover version of Mistborn, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I hate this cover. I think it's horrible. It doesn't really tell you much about what the story's about. There have been so many greater covers. Even those bad YA covers were better than this one. So this is one when I got the hardcover, I was very disappointed with it, but the words within are fantastic. The Mistborn trilogy, the first era, is still my favorite Sanderson, at least series. We'll see where Stormlight ends up when he's done, but I love the original Mistborn trilogy. Just hate the cover. All right, on to number six, Stuffing, a comfort read. Well, I had to think about what have I read the most in my lifetime? And what I've read the most in my lifetime is The Lord of the Rings. I've read The Lord of the Rings four times in my lifetime, and it is a comfort read. I first read it sixth grade, 12 years old, I guess, when you're sixth grade, and I loved it. I read it again uh, late teens. I think when I was in college, I read it again in my 20s, read it again when I was around 40. So it's something that has followed me my entire life. I love it each time. Each time it gives me something different, and it's definitely a comfort food for me, Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. 
All right, up next we have pies and desserts, guilty pleasure. And Madison, you're right, pumpkin pie is way gross. I don't know how people can ugh, stomach that. I don't like anything pumpkin anyway. Uh, but for my choice of my guilty pleasure, pies and desserts, is all my Star Wars books. They're kind of guilty pleasures because, frankly, none of them are, like, five-star must-reads. Well, maybe a couple of them. But most of them are just kind of breezy. You know, they're they're not highbrow. They're just fun stories. Some of them really aren't that good, but because they're Star Wars, I enjoy them. Uh, because of that, I'm the, the picture I'll put up here, I only own two of them. I only own two of the ones that I really love. The rest of them I've gotten, you know, from my library or listened to on audible.com, that kind of thing. But those are my guilty pleasures. It is fun to just pick up a Star Wars book. They're, you know, kind of brainless fun, and I enjoy them. All right, uh, up to number eight, the veggie tray, something just for looks. Now, I don't do that. I don't really buy a book just for looks, but I have bought some editions just for looks, Right above me here, you know, these are all my Dickens editions, and I didn't have to buy all the beautiful leather bounds, but I do just like the way they look on the shelf. So I guess that satisfies this prompt. Uh, I haven't read them all because I like reading one Dickens per year over the summer, and I bought like six of these at a time when I found them at a good price. So uh, I have the next like five or six years lined up. But uh, I do love Dickens, and I do love this leather bound. Those are the Folio Society, or sorry, Folio. Those are the Easton Press editions from the 1970s that I've been collecting. So that would be my veggie tray just for looks. All right, The Leftovers, better on a reread. I'll be honest, most books of quality are better on a reread because you notice more. When you're not fixated on plot elements, and you're just noticing more that's going on, I think most great books of literature are better on a reread. But to have to pick something, I would say any long work of epic fantasy where the author knew at the beginning where he or she was taking the story. Like my top two up here, Wheel of Time. From what I understand, I haven't reread it yet. But from what I understand, the foreshadowing is ridiculously good in those early books, for those that know how it ends. Realm of the Elderlings, I can't wait to read the Farseer trilogy again, knowing Fitz's full journey and seeing where it started. I think all of these are, are fantastic on a reread. So that's my choice for leftovers. I love rereads and I love leftovers, so that was a fun prompt to think about. All right, number 10, The Long-Winded Uncle. <laughs> so something that went on a little too long. So I hate to bring up one of my favorite authors, but I'm going to, and I'm going to say Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. I felt the pacing of this book was very poor. And I hate to say that about Sanderson because he is an author that I love. But I felt that he could have cut about 300 pages out of this book and would have made it a lot better. It was very slow. It felt like a middle book series or middle book of a series or maybe just the penultimate book of this first arc where he's setting things up for the last book. I have no doubts that Sanderson will stick the landing and that fifth book will be amazing. But Rhythm of War as a whole, I thought was poorly plotted and paced and just went on too long. Just like that uncle in this prompt. And I hope I'm not that uncle that goes on too long. Hmm. All right, two to go. Family drama, plot twists and turns. Ooh, family drama, that's fun. Well, I think of plot twists and turns. What book has the best plot twist ever? That's Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. I don't think this would benefit from a reread, knowing the plot twist, but this is the best plot twist I've ever read anywhere. So that has to be the one for family drama because, oh my goodness, if you haven't read it or haven't seen the movie, Read that book and strap in. <laughs> it's one of the best plot twists ever. All right, and the last prompt is Holiday Planning, my most anticipated read for 2023. Well, I'm just going to say, check out my video. I did a TBR 2023 video that I'll drop here or here or somewhere. And that lays out four book series and four individual books and four new authors that I want to read in 2023, what I most want to read there. So check out that video and you can find a full answer to that question.
Now here's where I'm supposed to tag somebody, but I'm gonna, not gonna tag anybody because it's a Thanksgiving tag and I'm posting this the day after Thanksgiving. So because of that, if you really wanna do the tag, tag yourself and then just tag me on the video. I'd love to see your answers to this prompt because I really like this. Uh, thank you, Madison, for tagging me. I enjoyed watching your video and I enjoy thought of it, thinking about this food and I hope all of you have had a great, happy Thanksgiving and I hope you have a great holiday season coming up. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter and Goodreads. I'd love to interact with you there. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.